I would say Nazis were a much more fun bad guy. They were. Because, Ed, well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, it's like... Um, well, nobody feels sorry for Nazis, do they? Nobody has that thing where... Yeah, you exactly. It's nobody, like Nazis, it's like ultimate evil. Yeah, you didn't have fucking video game critics stood there putting the high stool and saying fucking... It's a highly unrealistic depiction of the Middle East, you know. This is a very insensitive game. We shouldn't be encouraging violence such as this and trying to be a little pretentious liberal left-leaning political point-scoring editorial <laughs> writing. <laughs> John Walker! <laughs> oh. oh my. You wouldn't have got that back in the days of World War II games because Germans are expendable. Germans are... Nazis. <laughs> yeah, they, they've just like they've forfeited the right to live just because once they killed a few Jews. Well, well not few. even then permanently. Like, <laughs> a bit more than a few. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, you've earned your place in history. You'll be forever known as that the guy. indisposable <laughs> bad guy. Yeah, you're you're officially that guy now. Yeah. <laughs> History but it's is like written this, by the victors. But this is another thing that... Um, no, it's not true. History is not written by the victors. History is written by Americans. But this, but this is another thing that, that Doom kind of did, is because it, the demons from hell, again, it's sort of like... It's, it's, it was a... Again, I haven't really done that before in a first-person shooter. It's like... It well, um, just, nobody had done first-person shooters before. Well, Wolfenstein, okay. Well, that was ID. It, it, so. Well, exactly, that's what I mean, but it's... Um, well, it didn't, like, create the entire genre of first-person shooters, but this was one of the first examples ones. where everything came together yeah. in the way that it should. But it was... Uh, it shows, man, because they got it right the first time with this. So, yeah, Wolfenstein might not be the best game. You play it now and it's like, okay, this is too simple. It's it's too drastically basic, do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, but well, with Doom, well, basic. When you think about it, they didn't add a lot with Doom. They just added the kind of ability to, you know, give the illusion of vertical height. Hmm. It's not even real vertical height. It's fake vertical height based on vertexes or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember reading about it. Some... It, it don't make sense when you read about it, but when you start... No, no, it does make sense. It's sort of like, it, 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 it pretends that, the, like this here, really, you're not actually up there. Because yeah, it's exactly. Not, you're yeah. on the same plane, it's just view. It don't make sense to read about how it does it, but when you start making levels for it, it, it you instantly yeah. understand. But, like... Yeah, that's the only real difference between Doom and Wolfenstein, as well as the walls can curve. In Wolfenstein, there had to be, like, blocks. Yeah, it's a right angular. Yeah. And also light levels. That's pretty much all they added. Doesn't this have and some it makes a massive difference. The amount of realism that it adds just to... I mean, this is as realistic as you need to be. I think it's like the graphics, the basic, but everything is clean and well designed. And mm. Do you get any more realistic but, than this? I mean, it's, sort of, it's getting to the point now in, with video games in general where they're starting to cross the uncanny valley. Yeah, they're really Because are. it's sort of like it, everything's getting too realistic. And I, I don't really like that in some ways because it's like I want to still be aware that I'm playing a game, and especially with 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 like uh, racing games like Gran Turismo, the new Gran Turismo it just looks too realistic for it, for me to be comfortable with it. It's not that it, not that it's a bad game. I'm sure it's really good. Gran Turismo has always been a pretty good series, but it just looks too realistic for me to be comfortable with it. Right. Like, do, do you understand say, what I, I mean? I would say reali realism is the problem, but I think that it's. It's like you say, it's some kind of valley effect, but like, it's not to do with realism, I don't think. It's just to do with the fact that the art design and everything else with the game cannot catch up to mm. where the realism is, if that makes sense. Yeah. But it's just, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, I'd rather play something that has these really, really nice 2D sprites with, with like good, good design and everything than play some ultra-realistic looking thing because it just kind of freaks me out, I guess. I don't know if that's just me. I think It's because the more realistic things get, the more you are aware that you're playing a game. If, you, if yeah. you're playing something that looks video gamey, you can suspend your disbelief when you become... That's what it's about, really. It's suspension of disbelief. But once it once it becomes more realistic, your brain is there looking at how realistic it is and expecting things to be properly realistic. Yeah. So it notices the things that aren't realistic. You can more. kind of it's like playing it's like playing the original Castlevania on the or the Castlevanias on the NES, apart from Simon's Quest, because no one ever plays that because it's shit. Mm. Where it's like the complete simplicity of it almost kind of lets you, like forces you to use your imagination and you lose yourself to it more because of that. 
Do, 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 do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's kind of... Yeah. It's similar to that, I think, but, like, it's more to do with the fact that you can you can only process a certain amount of realism. Mm. If you look at the first wave of, like, really posh, high-tech graphics that we got around 2003, 2004... Yeah, you know, with the PlayStation 2 and stuff, yeah. Well, it was more with, like... Um, you know when Half Life Two, Doom Three, Far Cry. Oh God, yeah. Uh, Half Half Life Two was the big one because I remember seeing that in magazines and going. Far Jesus Cry came out first. Christ. Far Cry came out first, and it it was like the first next gen shooter. But like you could see the difference in graphics between what came before and that, and it looked like a massive leap. Mm. It was like, wow, this is amazing. I remember looking at screenshots in PC Gamer magazine and being like, wow, this is the future. The and then Doom 3 and being like, wow, this looks amazing. And then Half-Life 2 and thinking, man, this is practically real life. And now but it's, now, now it really is in, practically real life. Not really, though. <laughs> you can still see where they've got miles of improvement to make, but they're just not doing it. They're taking shortcuts in graphics and, like... Because development is now primarily for consoles, it's all lowest common denominator instead of actually pushing hardware to where it's capable of. Mm. And like sloppy, lazy programming, but that's an entire other point. But like what I was trying to say originally is that the difference between graphics then and now, like like the jump that it made in quality over that between say Call of Duty and Far Cry, it looked astounding the difference. Everything was mm. so much tangibly different. But now the they've announced the new consoles and I literally can't see a difference in the graphics between PS3 and PS4. I actually can't tell. And whether that's because... It is a bit... It is... It is. Whether that's because they've just really made shit consoles this time, or if graphics are genuinely slowing down that much. It's weird you should say that, because I was thinking this. I think the only game that I've seen so far uh, that really kind of makes me go, okay, that is quite different, is uh, that Rise, Sons of Rome. And even there, even there, it's barely noticeable. The the, the leap from, um, like, say, PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4 or Xbox 360 to Xbox One isn't anywhere near as big as the leap that was made from like, say, PS2, PS2 to, PS2. to the PS3. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, because it, it's gotten to that point now where it's like, well, what more can you do with it? It's not It's not got that point at all, Dave. The no, problem graphically. Is, no, it hasn't. It's nowhere near that point. They can do so much more. But the problem is they're too busy trying to develop it for Xboxes that people can afford to buy fucking thousands of so that they can pay to play on Xbox well, Live. Well, that's what I mean. The yeah, market obviously. has gone down the wrong direction. It's like everybody wants big shiny graphics, but they're not willing to accept that big shiny graphics are primarily the mainstay of nerds who can afford to buy four graphics cards priced at £300 each, okay, put them all in SLI, and then buy a fucking hex core processor, overclock it, water cool it, that's what you need to do to have the hardware to power graphics as good as people want. But you are not willing, alien speed now. They're not so willing to yeah. admit it. They're not willing to fucking accept the fact that really amazing graphics come from PCs that have had a lot of money spent on them. To be they're fair, trying to squeeze it out of consoles and it's never going to work. Yeah. So the fact is, they've now released the PS4 and instead of accepting the fact that, right, we can't really realistically push graphics any further from the 300 to 400 point like pound price point for a console because it's like literally it's leveled out the hardware keeps getting more expensive the development keeps getting more expensive so they can still get much better graphics out of things but it's like they need to accept the fact that it ain't going to be fucking cheap mm. you know it's not going to be a free ride into console dreamland I, I just don't think that I, I i've never really thought the graphics mattered too much unless they really are a complete mess you know yeah and there are there are games that, that are like that nowadays. Well, that's the worst yeah. thing, yeah. Because they've got used to. It's like realism gets taken for granted, but you still get games that have awful graphics. And it's like, yeah, fair enough. They've got all the latest shading techniques. They've got all the latest texture mapping. But it's got it all the latest whatever graphical shit. All the latest bloom and brown. But if the art direction <laughs> sucks, and a lot of time the art direction does suck, mm. then it just looks shit. And what as well happens is, the like, if you think about it, because look at these levels here. These took the guys from Doom. The graphics are only as good as, like, the levels, really. Think about it. Yeah. So you can get levels for Doom where it looks amazing. It looks like Quake, as I've said. That's just down to the level. Oh. You can also get levels where someone who didn't know what the hell they were doing made the level. And it looks like a complete ass. <laughs> so... But they're using the same, like, tile sets and stuff, aren't they? Yeah, it's so. just like the graphics is not like it's not a magic thing that like this game has the good graphics 
it's all like dependent on various circumstances. That's no, oh, that's something that really annoyed me about. That's always annoyed me about people, even back in like when the PS One was like the leading console, where people go, "Oh, I'm not going to play that game because the graphics look like shit." It's like, what? Hang on a minute. You, what? <laughs> to be fair, it can really put you off a game. But, but again, it's sort of like, it, it's not everything, I no, think, it's not everything and I think too many people do take graphics like, what the hell, these graphics are shit, it's like, yeah, but the gameplay is excellent, you know, again, I think I think some, in some cases it's down to personal taste, I know a lot of people who play fighting games but can't stand 2D graphics for whatever reason, mm. and it's like, I, I absolutely love 2D graphics, I think the, two, the 2D is the way to go, but... Well, the thing is, you kind of counter your own point there, because you're saying, well, the graphics shouldn't matter, but at the same time, they are a thing that appeals to you. You love 2D graphics. No, no, yeah, but I mean, but my point being is that... If it, if it can add to a game's appeal, then it can also detract from it, because it's a matter of personal taste. Yeah, that, I think that does come into it, but but I, th my, I think my, my point being is that it, anyone who just kind of says, I don't want to play that game because of the graphics, is like, uh, can you at least give it a try instead of just jumping to that conclusion? I don't hear it so much anymore these days. It was mostly about, like I say, when the PS1 and the N64 were Well, out, yeah, because graphics were still a big selling point then, weren't they, really? Yeah, God. Oh, God, yeah, you, you missed out on that. That's at least bits? one good thing about it. We have got used to the era of graphics being all shiny, and people have kind of retroactively said, OK, maybe fine, we can put up with mm. not being great graphics. It's like the novelty has worn off. Mm. But at the same time, as I say, they could push it so much further, they're just not doing because the market that they're trying to squeeze money out of is a different market. Mm. The fucking games coming out for the PC are shit ports of console games now. <laughs> it's, 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 it's been flipped on its head. It has, completely and utterly, <laughs> because they realise that there's more profit in getting 12-year-olds to beg the mum to get a game about killing terrorists <laughs> constantly. I've forgotten where you go now. Oh, yeah, you go up here. Uh, it's fucking appalling as a state of the games market. Yeah. I think... Whoa. Ow. There's not something that... Yeah. I'm kind of noping at this. <laughs> it's alright, it's only hell night. But yeah, it's just when the barons start coming at you in droves that you got to start worrying. Oh, yeah. I don't know. But do you... I think you might have missed out on it. I think it was a bit before you really did the console thing. But do you remember when the, ho the whole bit war thing... Mm, what, why? Oh, it's um, back in the early 90s. I remember this from when I was really young. Uh, the whole thing. Well, I, I'm assuming you're at least aware of the 90s sort of like Sega versus Nintendo s dispute. I'm probably aware of this stuff. I just don't know what you mean by bit war. Well, well, the, every, every, it was it, it, it was like um, PlayStation and N64. It's like it was a console war basically. Yeah. But yeah, that was like the most well-known one because that was when they could publicly, like even in their advert, Sega's advert for the map for I think it was the Mega Drive. That's the genesis for you American viewers. <laughs> Puffs. But it's. Um, what was it? It was a uh, Sega does what Nintendo don't. Yeah. It was like it was just totally in their fucking face, and um, everything seemed to revolve around about how many bits a console had. Yeah, it doesn't really make much sense because it's like what is a bit? Exactly. <laughs> They're like, oh, ours is thirty-two bit, uh, six yeah. four. Ours is hundred and twenty-eight bit on the PS2, and yeah. it's like, no, the PS2 is not one hundred and twenty-eight bit. <laughs> how the fuck have you worked this out? What What do you even mean by exactly. that? Do you mean the color palette? But the, this computer yeah. that I'm still... The computer that you play Crisis on. The fucking best looking game ever. It's still 32-bit. The processor has a 32-bit architecture. It, it like, is x86. I also, it has been based on an Intel architecture since the mid-fucking 80s. I also remember... It's not 128-bit. It was the Atari... The 64 is barely even 64-bit. I think it was the Atari Jaguar where their advert was like this woman in a classroom and she's like, oh yeah, uh, the the super, like, like the Nintendo Entertainment System is 8-bit and the the fucking uh, the, the Sega Mega Drive is like is like fucking 16-bit or whatever. You know, this is 32-bit. The Atari Jaguar is 64-bit. Which one's more advanced? Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't think it really works that uh, way. Uh, this <laughs> level. Jesus, this level on ultraviolence is something. The Crusher. Right. Yeah, it's one of those marketing buzzwords, isn't it? Like, Ooh, fucking, oh, and you then, still get that in graphics cards and stuff nowadays. They're like, well, this one's got this many vertex pixel pipelines. And you're like, <laughs> what? Pixel fucking pipelines? Another good no, one. This one's got 12 teraflops. Of Another good power. one was um, with the Sega Mega Drive. They said that it used blast processing. Yeah. And it's like, that's not a thing, Sega. <laughs>